Her strong female characters have been brought to life by some of the biggest stars. Angela Bassett lighting up the screen, along with Whitney Houston in Waiting to Exhale. The book about four women figuring out love, life, and friendship stayed at the top of the New York Times bestseller list for nearly 40 weeks. And when Terry sold the paperback rights in 1992, it went for a reported $2.6 million, breaking publishing records at the time. Terry's fifth novel, How Stella Got Her Groove Back, was another hit with one million copies printed in the first release. Her books have been called modern classics, earning Terry countless awards, including not one, but two from the NAACP and a Lifetime Achievement Award from Essence Magazine. And Terry's 10th and latest novel is called It's Not All Downhill From Here. Oh, fingers crossed it's not. It's out in paperback now. It's a story of a woman in her 60s charting a new path after unexpectedly finding herself at a crossroads. It's gotten rave reviews already. Harper's Bazaar, Essence, The Washington Post, Oprah Magazine called it wise and wisecracking. And I'm excited and honored to welcome the wise woman herself, Terry McMillan, to the show. It's so good to finally have you here with us. Thank you know you. that I, I follow you on Twitter, so when I saw your tweet, <laughs> I saw your tweet saying that you were coming on the show, I'm just flattered and honored that Terry McMillan even knows my name. So thank you again for being here. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for having me. I really do appreciate it. I do. And you have, are good, honey. Oh, please, listen, I got to unpack. So as I said, of course, the book is right here next to me, but I do need to dig into some of these tweets that I read in the middle of the night from you. Was, <laughs> here's what Terry tweeted one day. I wish I had invented paper towels. Another <laughs> one. I'm starting to appreciate soup. What is happening at Terry McMillan's house in the middle of the night? And can I come? To visit. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, yeah. Um, I mean, I, the, this pandemic has made everything important that wasn't important. Um, I mean, really, I can tweet about anything. <laughs> I love it. You know, you're also very revealing uh, on your social media about the writing process. There was one you did last month, and it said, writing yourself into a corner. Were you talking, I can't imagine Terry McMillan having writer's block or writing yourself into a corner. What were you feeling at well, that time? I'll put it this way. One of the things that you do when you write is you try to undo things that are incorrect. And I like to have my characters tell me what it is they feel, what they, what they think, and what they want to do and how they're tackling something. And sometimes, I put them in a situation where it's not easy to get out of it. Yeah. And then I, as a writer, um, have to figure out how they would do it. Not the way I would do it, right. the way they would do it. And sometimes it's a little tricky. I like that distinction you said how the characters would do it and not you, because as you know, since you burst onto the scene, people always look for glimpses of Terry in characters, no matter what the character is. And, and I've heard you talk about this. So, you know, whether it's Stella, whether it's Loretha in, in the new book, are these characters based on you or are these people and situations all invented from other sources, not your personal life? No, thank goodness. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I don't know. I would probably not be sitting here if all of these characters had some resemblance to my personal life and my thoughts and feelings and beliefs. No. Um, I, I start with people that I don't understand mm. or people that I am concerned about, and I make them up. I mean, there are some things in the past where, where my work was a little bit more autobiographical when, I'm, when I you know, I married a younger guy. But other than that, but even the way that happened, it, it didn't happen the way I wrote it in real life. You're talking about Stella got her groove back, that your, your marriage at the time. Yeah, I wrote that book in 28 days. Jeez. And, Do you and know I'm writing my writing first for... novel and it's been a year? I've been writing my first novel and it's been a year, and you wrote yours in 28 days, but that's why you're great and I'm here. Listen, yeah. though, this character, Loretha, for example, she has diabetes. You've spoken about your condition as well. Is there an alignment between this character who's in her 60s at the crossroads asking, is it, is it downhill from here? Part of why the reason that I wrote this book is because I do think that a lot of people think, you know, oh, wow. I mean, I remember when I turned 50, I was like, oh, Lord. 
And um, I thought I'd never have sex. I'd never fall in love again and all this. And I just realized, you know, you know, the mind is a powerful thing. You can convince yourself to believe anything. Yeah. And I, I just don't think that that it is all downhill from here. There's so many things that we can still enjoy. I mean, I'm 69. I can't believe it. What? And uh, I, I really, I can't believe it. But I can't I'm either. It. I mean, not I'm only... Owning, I'm owning it. You don't look six, whatever 69 looks like, but your energy, you know what I mean? It's your energy. It's the flow. It's the way you move. It's the way you handle yourself. It. You know, I look back at pictures... And you see people, you know, in their 40s back in 1920, you go, oh, my gosh, they look like they were 100. I think it's just the energy of where we are and, and how you flow through it. Well, I'll put it this way. The reason that I wrote this book is because I think a lot of people do think life is that it's all downhill from here. Mm. And, um, and I just wanted to be able to tell a story about characters who do a lot of the wrong things. They, they treat themselves poorly. And as a result, they have to learn how to take better care of themselves mentally, physically, psychologically, wow. emotionally, all of it, and not give up. And not because give up. We, we can do a lot of this. Our attitude has a lot to do with how we live. And if, and if you don't treat yourself well, why should anybody else? Terry, everyone wants to know about Waiting to Exhale. It's going to be a TV series. Lee Daniels is involved. It's mm -hmm. a, As I understand, these are the daughters of the characters that we fell in love with. What else can you tell me about the premise here? Well, I think that's part, I think that's part, part of it. But I also think and hope that some of the other members of the cast who are still with us will make cameos. And they're trying to create or recreate the essence of the story and not necessarily, it's, it's not a reenactment yeah. of the story. So that's how I see it. So you're also, you have your other book, I Almost Forgot About You, and it's getting turned into a movie starring Viola Davis. Yes, Miss Sexy. Listen, beautiful. if ever I'm there was a room I wanted to be in, it would be a room with Terry McMillan and Viola Davis. We won't be in the same room unless they let me on the set. I might have to pay. <laughs> <laughs> She's amazing. Everything she does. I mean, I'm flattered. You have no idea how flattered I am. <laughs> Listen, you are everything that I dreamt that this experience would be, and I can't wait for us to be able to get in studio, and perhaps you and Miss Viola Davis and Lee Daniels, we can all do a show together just celebrating okay. the incredible characters and images that you've all brought to movie and to film and to our hearts. Thank you so much, Terry. Thank you, honey. You look good. I, I And I want that top and those earrings, so you can just put them in the mail. <laughs> I love Terry. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you. The one and only Thank Terry you. McMillan. And be sure to check out Terry's latest book. It's not all downhill from here. The paperback is available now.